Babies are born with 20 primary teeth that are hiding inside their gums. And over the next two and a half to three years, those teeth are going to erupt and break through those gums. And this process is what we know as teething. Now, the good news is the discomfort a little one experiences from teething should technically only start a few days before that tooth breaks through and stop a few days afterwards. The not so good news is that your baby is going to go through this process 20 times. So in this video, we are going to cover what are the teething symptoms, what are not teething symptoms, as well as some strategies to help you relieve some of that discomfort your little one's going to experience. But before we do, make sure you click on that free PDF document in the description box below, which covers the developmental milestones you can be expecting for your little one in their first year of life. This will give you an invaluable peace of mind as you'll know when to be expecting certain skills and when to be concerned. Teething can begin as early as three months of age, but you're more likely to see your baby's first tooth anywhere from four to seven months of age, or in extremely rare cases, your baby might've been born with a tooth or have a tooth arrive in the first few weeks of life. So the first two teeth you're most likely to see are the center two bottom teeth. And then there's a set sequence that the teeth typically arrive in, but it's not uncommon for babies' teeth to arrive out of sequence. No matter what order those teeth arrive, your baby will have 20 teeth by their third birthday. So they'll have 10 teeth on the bottom jaw and 10 teeth on the top jaw. Now you might have a baby who doesn't show you any signs at all that they're teething and those teeth just arrive. Or you have a little one who has all the teething signs. So the, one of the first things you might notice is an eruption cyst and that is a blue or gray bubble on your baby's gum which will disappear when that tooth comes through. Your baby might also have gum pain. So that's pain at the site where that tooth is going to come through. And that sometimes results in a baby being more fussy and changing their diet. So they prefer to have kind of pureed food or softer food because the harder food is causing them more discomfort. And of course their sleep might be interrupted because of that gum pain. You might also notice that your baby has an increased craving to chew on absolutely everything. So that might be your toy fingers or anything else that they can find around the house. Now with this chewing, you will notice an increase in dribbling and drooling. Now the key word here is an increase in this um, behavior, not the start of dribbling and drooling, which generally happens at around eight to 12 weeks of age, which is when your baby first starts to make saliva. So this isn't a sign in itself that they're teething, but as a result of extra chewing on things, your baby is going to dribble more because unfortunately those motor receptors in the mouth are going to send a message to the brain to say produce more saliva and then our little ones don't yet have the skill to swallow that saliva or actually manage it in their mouth so that dribble is just going to come straight on out. Now because of that extra drooling your baby might also develop a dribble rash. Now teething does not cause a fever or diarrhea. So if your little one is experiencing any of those symptoms, it's important to go to a doctor to have them checked. Now let's talk about what you can do to help alleviate some of the discomfort your little one might be experiencing when teething. So the very first thing you can do is provide a gum massage. So putting pressure on the sore gum can actually decrease the pain your little one's experiencing. So you would obviously clean your finger and then rub that along the swollen or irritated part of your baby's gum. And you can do this as many times as you want throughout the day. Really, it depends on how happy your little one is to let you rub their gum. Now, if your little one isn't that happy for you to rub their gum, don't worry, they can actually rub their own gum and essentially give themselves a gum massage by chewing on things. So they can chew on a pacifier or a dummy if they're already using it. If they're not using it, then don't worry about introducing it. Or you can use a wet face washer. Now this face washer should be placed in the fridge after it's been wet and chilled and then given to your baby to munch on. Don't put it in the freezer because if you put it in the freezer, there's a risk that they'll get freezer burn when they put it in their mouth. Now to make it easier for your little one to actually hold the face washer, I've seen lots of videos where they actually um, do it like this and then they just twist it and then wet this part of the face washer and place it in the fridge and then give it to the baby. As you can see, this is a really thick handle. It would be really hard for your little one to hold. So a better option is to actually roll it up really, really tightly. And then again, only wet one end and then place that in the fridge and then you can give it to them as a thin 
cylindrical item to hold, which is easier for your babies. Or you can give them a teething ring. Now I prefer teething rings that are circular because it's easier for a four to seven month old baby to hold when you're thinking about their fine motor skills or a teething ring that is cylindrical in nature. Now, of course, when you're looking at buying a teether, you wanna make sure that they're made from non-toxic ingredients. So that might be 100% natural rubber, food grade silicon, untreated natural hardwood, or food grade safe plastics. And if you get a teether that you can place in the fridge, even better because then you can give it to your little one chilled. Again, remember, don't put it in the freezer because when you give it to your baby, it can actually cause a little bit of frostbite, so it's not ideal. Your baby might also like using teething rusts or biscuits or having food that is chilled, but this is only really appropriate if your little one is eating and you need to always make sure that you're watching your little one when they've got a teething rusk or biscuit. Now, because your little one is going to be chewing on a lot more things, you're going to notice that increase in dribbling, which can cause a dribble rash. So you wanna prevent that rash from happening by making sure that you wipe away any excess drool and also use bibs that have a waterproof backing and applying a moisture barrier cream if needed. And if you want more information on how to manage your baby's dribbling to prevent that rash occurring, then make sure you check out the video linked above. Now the other strategy that can work really well is distraction. So this is only really helpful for when your baby's awake during the day, it doesn't help at night time. But what you can do is just try and engage your baby in more play, just to try and distract them from that pain. Now, if they continue to experience some pain and discomfort and it's interrupting their day and their night sleep, you can consider using medication to manage that pain, but that's always something you should talk to your baby's doctor about because then you can find out what medication is suitable and at what level. Now, there are some things that are no longer recommended for helping relieve teething symptoms, and that is firstly the teething necklaces. So these are jewelry or beads that are worn around a baby's neck or on their wrist to help relieve some of those teething pain, and it's typically made from amber. Now the US Food and Drug Administration or FDA no longer recommend these because it can lead to strangulation and there is a risk of choking if those beads break off at all. The FDA also do not recommend the use of teething gels because they have found that they're not necessarily useful for babies who are teething and in fact it can cause your baby harm. So teething gels themselves usually wash out of your baby's mouth very quickly because they swallow it. And then as parents, we tend to put more on and that excessive amount of medicine, which they are constantly swallowing, can actually be really harmful for your little one and cause some serious health conditions. For example, benzocaine, which is a local anesthetic found in some teething gels, can cause choking, bluish skin, allergic reactions, and a rare but serious blood disorder. So that's it parents, those are the signs your baby may show you when they are teething, as well as some strategies that you can use to help alleviate some of your baby's pain. Now, if you want some more advice on drooling and what it all means, then check out this video. And if you want more information on how to help your baby do some tummy time, then check out this one.